In this video, I'm going to show you how to mod the VUE side of a Wii U system. One of the coolest things about the Nintendo Wii U was that it included an entire Nintendo Wii sandbox inside of itself. In this mode, it acted just like an original Nintendo Wii, but had access to HDMI output, though up for debate on whether or not that was actually a good thing in terms of video quality, typically wasn't. It's beside the point, you still have a fully functional Wii with access to everything that the Wii homebrew scene has to offer. So in this video, we're going to show you how to get a modified VWeed to access the homebrew channel and do all the fun stuff with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as we begin this guide, we're going to need a couple of things. The main one being a Wii U system that has already been modified with Aroma Payload Custom Firmware. If you do not have a modified Wii U, I have a couple of guides on the channel on how to do it. The most up-to-date method is to hack your Wii U with the Aroma Custom Firmware. But if you happen to have an older Tiramisu setup Wii U, you can upgrade that to Aroma with just a few simple steps. So links to these two videos will be in the description below for anyone interested. Now, one of the steps that I cover in my video is how to install the Homebrew App Store. That is what we are going to be using to get our VWE modified initially. So load up into your Wii U with Aroma and load into the Homebrew App Store. Once the Homebrew App Store is loaded, head over to the Aroma Ready section and now scroll down. until you find the VWE Compat installer. And now just press A to download this. And then you could also grab the enhanced VWE Aroma plugin. And once both of these have been downloaded, just go ahead and exit out of the Homebrew App Store. Once you're back on your Wii U home screen, go ahead and find the VWE Compat installer and launch it. On this screen, go ahead and press A to install the homebrew channel to your Wii system menu. And when finished, press home to exit. Once back on the Wii U home screen, we're going to load up into the Wii menu to make sure that the homebrew channel has been installed. And here we are on the Wii system menu, and we can see that the homebrew channel has loaded in. So I'm just going to go ahead and boot into this for the next step. So here we are in the homebrew channel for the Wii. There's no apps loaded on this SD card, so the menu is blank, which is to be expected. But loading into the homebrew channel lets us take the SD card out of our Nintendo Wii U without any issues. So we're gonna go ahead and take it out on this screen and move it over to our computing device so we can add some things to the SD card for installing Preloader. So over on the Doco Taco GitHub page, we're gonna be getting the latest version of Preloader. So just scroll down to the download section here. And again, we're gonna grab the latest version of Preloader.zip. So just don't worry about the version number, just grab the one that says latest. We're gonna grab the load Preloader zip. And if you would like to have the Wii U forwarder to just boot straight into preloader from the Wii U system menu, you can grab this one as well. With all three of these downloaded, just get them extracted. So we're going to go ahead and load up preloader. And we're going to drag the apps folder from the preloader folder onto the root of our Wii U's SD card. Now we're going to open up load preloader and same thing. We're going to drag the apps folder into the root of our Wii U SD card. It will merge with the current apps folder. And now for the preloader Wii U forwarder, we're just going to drag the Wii U folder into the root of our Wii U's SD card and it will merge with that one. With all of these set, we can go ahead and eject the SD card and move it back over to our Wii U. So upon putting the SD card back into your Wii U while in the homebrew channel, it should automatically boot up with the new apps that you have just loaded up. So the first one we're going to do is the preloader installer. So just go ahead and press A on this. Go over to load, press A, and it will do some initial detection stuff. So just wait for it to do its thing. And once complete, press the plus button on your Wii remote to install or update preloader. And make sure that your Wii remote is paired as player one, otherwise this menu will be unresponsive. So just press plus again to install it. And press A to exit back out to the homebrew browser. Now from here, we could go up to load preloader. And from here, you can change some settings if you desire, such as system menu hacks. 
So block online updates, go ahead and enable this one. Auto press A at the health and warning screen. If you don't wanna to have to press A on that screen, you can just automatically bypass it. And if you don't like seeing that screen at all, you can enable the replace the health screen with the back menu. If you wanna be able to move the disc channel, you can enable this. If you plan on playing on WeemFi with the physical discs, enable this one. You can disable save copy protection. And then you can make the VWE completely region free. And then if you're using HDMI, turn on remove deflicker. And once you're going through, just go ahead and save your settings. Now, if you head down to settings, you can change how the system auto boots. You can change this to instantly boot to the homebrew channel, or if you want to install a custom app, you can have it boot to the installed file. So to do that, you just head up to load and install file. It will see all the apps available on your SD card. So if you have like USB loader GX, you can install that. And then under settings, you can change that over to the installed file so it'll auto boot into USB loader GX. I like auto booting into the homebrew channel, so this is what I'm gonna set mine to. And once done, save settings. But once you're done in here, just go ahead and boot back into the homebrew channel. All right, so now from here, we're gonna get things set up to work with our USB loaders. So we're gonna go ahead and take the SD card out of our Wii U once again. Again, it's safe to do so inside the homebrew channel. So to get the D2X CIOS installer, we're going to grab it from the awesome WeHacks guide assets files. So just copy this link from the description below and paste it into your web browser to do a direct download. Once downloaded, get it extracted. And inside you'll see a D2X CIOS installer folder. So from here, we're gonna get the D2X-CIOS-Installer added to our Wii Apps folder. So inside your Wii U's SD card, open up the Apps folder and drag the D2X-COS.Installer folder right on in. With that moved over, go ahead and put it back into your Wii U. And when you put the SD card back into your Wii U, you should see it auto-populate with the new D2X COS installer. So scroll up to this and load it. And when you're greeted with this screen, just go ahead and press any button on your Wiimote to continue. And now from here, we're gonna do three different CAOS settings to install. So I'm gonna have these written on the screen on the right hand side for you to follow, but you'll also see me select them right now but we are going to select D2X-V11-Beta1-VWE. And for CIOS base, we're gonna choose 56. And for CIOS slot, we're gonna choose 249. Once these are set, press A to install. Once you have the success screen, press A to continue. Now we're gonna keep D2X-V11-Beta1-VWE selected. We're gonna change the CIOS base from 56 to 57 and the CIOS slot from 249 to 250 and press A. And once you see the success screen, press A once again. Now, once again, we're gonna leave this on D2X-V11-Beta1-VWE and we're gonna change the CIOS base to 58 and the CIOS slot to 251 and press A to install. And this time when you're greeted with the success screen, go ahead and press B to exit. And that will bring us back into the homebrew channel. All right, for this next section, we're gonna be installing a WAD manager so you can install your own virtual console titles or backed up WiiWare games, as well as doing some other installations that make the Wii act a bit more like an original Wii, such as the Mii Maker connecting with DS and Wii remotes. We're also gonna be patching iOS 80. Anyway, go ahead and take the SD card out of your Wii U once again. And this time around, we're gonna be downloading a few things. So the first of which is gonna be the Homebrew browser, so that way you could download Homebrew directly to your Wii system. So homebrewbrowser.zip, download this. Next, we're gonna be downloading yet another WAD Manager Mod Me edition. So again, all these links will be in the description below, but just download the file. We're gonna be grabbing the patched iOS 80 installer for VWE. So again, link in the description below, click on download. If you would like to update the photo channel that is on the VWE to version 1.1 as seen on the original Wii, you can download the photo upgrader zip. Next, we have the 43 dB patcher. So this is a homebrew that makes it so 16 by nine aspect ratios will work in certain WiiWare titles where it tried to force four by three. And finally, if you'd like to have the full Mii Maker channel available on your VWii, you could copy one of the links hosted by the Wii Hacks Guide. So Windows, Mac, or Linux. Paste that link into a web browser. It will download a script that will get you the 
MeMaker channel. So here we go. Now to run this script, chances are you might need to edit some execution policies on your Windows install. So if you go and open up a search bar, type in PowerShell, or just Power, you should automatically see it pop up. Just go ahead and load that. And so when I try to execute this script, you can see that we have an unauthorized access because it's not digitally signed, which is fine. So to fix this, we're gonna set an execution policy. So I'm gonna have this typed out in the description below, but set dash execution policy dash scope current user unrestricted. But once you have that execution policy set, go ahead and right click on the script, tell it to run with PowerShell, let it open, and then type R on the command prompt screen here, and wait for it to do its thing. And once it's finished, you'll be given a me channel v6 we dot wad file. Perfect. So we can go ahead and delete that script. We don't need it anymore. But from here, go ahead and get your Wii USD card brought up on your computing device. Going to make a new folder real quick named wad. This is a nice easy folder where you can put wad files you want to install with a wad manager. So we're going to put the me channel in there. Now we're going to go ahead and get the rest of these programs extracted. So we're going to start with the homebrew browser. So just copy the apps folder into the root of your Wii USD card so it merges with the other apps folder. Same thing with patched iOS 80. Same with the photo upgrader. And the 43 dB patcher. And yet another WAD manager mod me edition. So there we go. With all of that in place, just go ahead and take it out and put it back into your Wii U. Back on your Wii U, you will see that you now have access to the Homebrew browser. This will be good for downloading Homebrew directly to your Wii U in a little bit for the Wii side of things. So now I'm going to boot up into yet another WAD manager so we can install the new Me channel. Under source device, we're going to press A with Wii SD slot. Now we're going to head down to the me channel and press A and under action install wad so press A to continue. And once the installation completes you can just go ahead and press the home button to exit back out to the homebrew channel. Next we're going to install the patched iOS 80 so go ahead and launch into this. Read through this note it tells you that there is a risk of doing this because if the install fails it will brick your the Wii side of your Wii U. So when you hacked your Wii U initially, you did a NAND dump. That includes a backup of your VWii. So if this install fails, you will need to restore your VWii with that backup. Once you have read through the entire memo, go ahead and press any button to continue. And once the installation is completed, press any button to exit. Now we'll do the photo upgrader. and we'll tell it to install Photo Channel 1.1. So press A to install Photo Channel 1.1 and then press Start to continue. Once completed, press the Home button on your Wii Remote to return to the Humber channel. We'll go ahead and install the WW43DB patcher now. So we'll just load it up. And there's two options to choose from. You can patch the whole WiiWare 4x3 aspect ratio database or only apply it to Wii Connect 24 channel entries. So we're just going to go ahead and press 1 on our Wii Remote to do the entire database and just wait for it to do its thing. And once completed, press any button to exit back to the Homebrew channel. But now we can clean up the apps we don't need anymore. So for example, the 43dB patcher, we could delete this. Delete the preloader installer. Delete the photo upgrader. And the patched iOS 80 installer. And the D2X CIOS installer. We don't need that anymore. 
And that leaves us with a nice clean homebrew channel here. And so from here, you're just able to enjoy the VWE side of things just as it was on a real Nintendo Wii. So you could download USB loaders, install your own wads, homebrew, and the homebrew browser is a great resource for this. Now, one last thing I wanna show off real quick before we call this video is that enhanced VWE plugin we downloaded earlier. So by holding L down and minus. This will bring us into the Aroma plugin system, and here we have the enhanced VWE plugin. And inside is a general option, so there's enable four second power down. And then under DMCU, you can adjust the TV viewports. So if you want overscan, you can set these to 720, and it will make it so that it doesn't crop the overscan areas. And with that, your Nintendo Wii U now has a fully modified Wii sandbox included within it that you can now use like an original Wii and run homebrew and USB loaders to your heart's content. I will have additional videos on how to set up things like Nintendo or USB loaders for you to check out. But with the system modified, you're free to just begin doing whatever you want to do with it. So thank you so much as always for watching my videos. It means the world to me to have you here. And I hope that they serve as a great stepping stone for getting your systems to run how you desire. Here at the end, just the usual favors. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way and I'd love to have you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep this content coming your way, be sure to hit that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen as every little bit helps keep us running. Big shout out to all of our current backers, you just continue to be amazing and thank you again. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we will see you back next video.